Welcome to Module 9 of the Linux Board Porting Online Series. This is the second in a series of three modules which are centered around debugging the Linux kernel from source code using JTAG-based debugging in Code Composer Studio. In this second module of the series, I'll be showing you how to set up a bootable multimedia card in order to boot into U-Boot directly from the multimedia card and then set up U-Boot to load the Linux kernel over TFTP. This is the Linux kernel that we rebuilt on the host computer with debug information and then boot from that kernel. Again, we have our x86 host computer and the computer is attached now to an AM335X starter kit. The reason that I'm using an AM335X starter kit as opposed to the BeagleBone Black is that the BeagleBone Black does not have a UART style um, serial port. This board can do UART over USB or RS-232 over USB, which we will be using. And you can also see that I have connected to the board at the J6 connector. There's actually two Ethernet connections, but at the J6 connector I have an Ethernet cable. This board, because of the LCD, does require external power, so we're going to have that attached as well. In order to set up our bootable multimedia card, I'll be using this card reader. Um, this one happens to be a multi-format card reader, but if you look closely here, you can see the micro SD card. So just be sure that whatever reader you use has micro SD support. Now the last thing I'm going to do is put together a bootable multimedia card. So I'm going to go back to the top level of the directory and you see that we have a binaries directory. Within the binaries directory we have a setup or create SD card .sh. So I am going to plug in a card writer that has a micro SD card in it. Plug that in uh, and here we see it's been recognized by Ubuntu. So we have a four gigabyte just blank SD card. It doesn't matter really how it's formatted or what's on it because as soon as we run this create SD card script it's going to be overwritten with a bootable card. So now I can run sudo create SD card dot sh and I think it's actually yep uh, here it goes. It looks it sees that there is only one SD card on the system which is at slash dev slash SDB so I'll press 1 to select that from the list. Here it goes through the partitioning utility. Here it's done partitioning. Keep in mind that I fast forwarded through a lot of that. It'll take a couple of minutes usually for it to do the partitioning. Press Y to continue. Then I'm going to install pre-built images from the SDK, just get a, a base install. That's going to include the U image from the SDK, which is not a debugging U image. But um, what I'll show you is this is going to create a SD card that boots completely from the SD card. We're then going to remove the U image and modify it so that it still uses the MLO and U boot, but TFTPs the kernel from our system. But go ahead and for now we'll just create a standard bootable MMC card. Again, this takes a significant amount of time. I'm fast forwarding through it, um, but this will take three or four minutes for it to copy the root file system. Once that script is finished, I'm just going to unplug the card writer and plug it back in. That'll force Linux to auto mount it. And here we see um, it has created for us a boot directory and a root file system. I'm sorry, a boot partition and a root file system partition. So this gives us everything we need to boot. And as a first step, this, now this isn't using our debug kernel that we built, but as a first step, I'm going to plug this in to the BeagleBone board and just verify that it boots correctly. 
I'll start by invoking Minicom with dash S for setup and go to serial port setup. The device I'm using actually uses dev T2I USB 1. Save the setup as the default. And if I do exit, it'll exit into Minicom. Now I'm going to reset the board. And here we see U-boot booting, um, goes into the auto boot, and here's the kernel booting. So, all right, we have a good bootable multimedia card. I'm going to stop that, minimize this terminal, and then plug in our bootable multimedia card again. You'll notice that there's actually a new file here called pointer cal. That's the calibration for the touch screen. I never actually calibrated it, so let's go ahead and delete that, which will force a new calibration the next time we boot. Now the next thing I want to do is remove the U image here. So we'll just move that to the trash. And I'm going to put in a script called uenvironment.txt. So let's do a create new empty document and name it uenv.txt. That needs to be a capital E. It's going to start off empty, but I'll just right click on it and open it with a text editor. It does need to be a text editor. And this is going to allow us to put in environment variables that control how uBoot is going to boot. So instead of it using its default behaviors, it's going to use these instead. The first thing I want to create is the server IP and that's going to be the IP address of the TFTP server. Remember we set that statically to 192.168.1.1. Then I'm going to set the boot file to uImage. This is all documented by the way as part of the, the uBoot environment variables and then there is the uEnvironment command. This is the command that's going to be run um, when this script is loaded. So it's going to replace what's called the bootm command as the, the boot command. And this is where we'll tell it to use TFTP to get the U image. I tell it TFTP to get the kernel. That's going to use the boot file and server IP address listed above and then boot M will boot from the memory location that TFTP loads that. Oh, one last thing I forgot is IP adder. That's going to be the IP address of the board while it boots. Let's just give it 192.168.1.2. We're also going to need the boot args. These are the arguments that will be passed to the Linux kernel. We could use the ones that are already there, but since we don't know what they are, let's put our own in. For the boot args, I'm going to put in console equals ttyo0, 115.200 baud, no stop bit, and uh, or no parity, and 8-bit data. And then the root equals dev mmc block device0 partition2 tells it where the root file system is located. So what this uenvironment.txt will do is it will force every time we we reboot the system it will force it to pull the Linux kernel from the from the TFTP. So again we have the MLO, the uBoot and now this uenvironment.txt and I erased the U image from the boot partition so that we would be absolutely guaranteed that we we're never accidentally booting from the, the basic Linux kernel, that we're guaranteed that we're booting from the one that we have. As a matter of fact, I'll just reiterate, if I list TFTP boot, that's the default directory, and this on the host computer is where our U image, every time we rebuild it, will be relocated. So now I'm going to... eject the multimedia card. Always good to do that to make sure that any write buffers get cleared. And um, I'm just going to plug it into the development board. Bring up Minicom. 
And here we see the SPL boot, then the U boot, and then here it's using TFTP to load the kernel. And you can see the hash marks indicating that it's loading. As soon as it downloads the full kernel, then if everything goes correctly, it will boot. And here we see the feedback as the, the kernel boots. So we have the system up and running. Now we are ready in our next module to set up Code Composer Studio and our JTAG debugger and attach to this process so that we can debug the kernel as it boots. This concludes Module 8 of the Linux BoardPort online series. Please proceed to Module 9, where I'll show you how to set up a BeagleBone board to boot from an SD or multimedia card using U-Boot and the SPL from the multimedia card, but booting the Linux kernel using TFTP.